a plan for a slow start. So this is a really, really important concept. I have so many players who have labeled themselves as slow starters. Maybe you're one of them. You watch this or your coach or you, you, you label yourself as just a person that always has a slow start. Have a lot of people tell me, you know, I'm really bad in the mornings if I play an 8 a.m. match, you know, it's not in my best interest. So uh, here's the deal. No one goes out and hoping to have a bad start or a slow start where you're down 0-3 or 1-4. But it happens. It happens a lot. And what I find is that when it happens, very few players, rec players or junior players, have any clue what to do. They just kind of don't like it and they try to play better and raise their own level. So there's a couple things you need to know. First of all, the, the number one thing is you have to have a plan. So when I talk to a player about, you know, what's your plan for a, a slow start, they look at me like, well, I don't know. I don't want to have a slow start. And I go, I, I know that. But what if you find yourself down 0-3 in an important match? What are you going to do? And for the most part, they, they can't answer me. So I'm going to go on the court now here with Carly and Marty. We're going to talk about what makes a, a good idea or what's a good plan for a slow start. It's basically this idea of playing long points, but it's a little bit of flexibility. An immature point, a point that goes two, three hits and and is over, those are the ones you gotta look out for. The good news is later in this video, you're gonna find out how that you can take your plan for a slow start and everybody can do, apply it differently. You can kind of customize it to what's good for that person or this person. But in general, you're gonna to wanna to play long points. So let's go ahead and hit the courts with Marty and Carly and check out how you can have a plan for slow starts. How do you deal with a slow start? Okay, we all start matches and many of you some of you probably even think yeah I'm a slow starter I've been labeled by my coach or my friends or myself as a slow starter uh, slow starts happen no one plans for them no one wants to have a slow start but you have to have an idea or a survival plan for surviving a slow start and what I like to do with this is be very specific so if I'm coaching you in the middle of the match you say hey come on get with it you're having a slow start that's absolutely useless if you're coaching yourself saying come on get with it you know, you need something more usable. So what I like to do when someone has a slow start, and I think you should do, is play long points. That's the number one thing that causes a slow start is early errors, points that don't never reach full maturity. They're one, two hits, bam, that goes out of play. One, two, out of play, serve, out of play. So those are immature points. They don't reach the age of four to five shots. Okay, those are epidemic and they'll really get you off to a slow start. So over and over again, when I've had my own slow starts, I just try to play longer points because I need to get more shots under my belt so I can start feeling good about it. But here's the cool part. The way I would play a long point might not be best suited for you or you or you. Okay, so for me, if I needed to play long points, I didn't know exactly what I'd do. On my backhand side, I would resort to slice because I feel like I can make all my slices. And on my forehand side, I would hit tons of topspin. That's the way I would do it. I, that would ensure me to play longer points and stay in the battle a little bit longer. So how about you? Well, how do you like to play long points? If I said the next five points, you have to hit 20 balls each, what are you gonna do? Um, I would hit with lots of topspin, kind of like you said, and keep it deep, so okay. kind of loopy. Okay, loop it on. Uh, is it the same on both sides? Um, probably more on my forehand, um, loopy, but I guess similar. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and start hitting again, all right? And we're going to make the assumption that Carly here is having a slow start, and I'm working with her. She's got to play long points. All right, and we'll talk about some other options that people have because it's really customized to you. All right, let's play out some points, Gal. You good? No problem. Okay, Just stay in the point, stay in the point. Here we go. So possible other ways that people might play long points, um, maybe they slice. Maybe they have to take their power level down a notch or two. So instead of hitting uh, seven and eight and hitting kind of harder on the scale of 10, Maybe they hit fives and sixes for a while. Uh, maybe they crank up their amount of topspin. Maybe they shorten their back swings. Maybe they start moving their feet excessively and really hustle a lot more. So there's a whole bunch of ways to skin this cat, but it's really important that you come up with your own way. If you're not sure what works for you, then you can ask a coach, what, you know, what do you think coach is the best way for me to play long points? Uh, what I see unfortunately unfold I got a nervous player, he's out there, he's down 1-4, that's even contributing to his nerves. Uh, he's uh, fear of losing, fear of missing, and it gets really south. And if you were to check in with them sometimes, right at that point, 
they are hopeless for what to do. They have no idea. So at least this has, gives you something tangible to shoot for and to aim at. It's a plan. Uh, and I would say that probably, I'd say three quarters of the time when I'm coaching someone and they're having a slow start and I tell them about this uh, and they do extend the rally, it goes better for them. Um, doesn't work 100% of the time, but it's one more arsenal or thing in your arsenal that you can do to uh, help you with the fear of losing. Buckle down, this is a specific tactic for handling a slow start. Play long points, that's it Carly. Good, that's a good long rally. Nice looper. That's it, grind her out. Don't miss. Already this is helpful because this is a lot of 20 ball rally. And imagine you're not playing good and all of a sudden you have a 20 ball rally. Even if you lose that point, your strokes are starting to find themselves a bit. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Now watch, that was a perfect point. The way that unfolded, come over here, say Carly. Uh, this is important. Carly succeeded, I think, in that. She lost the point. So by, on the scoreboard, she didn't succeed. But she kept about 20 or 30 balls in, in a row in play. Uh, so what happens if she could do that for the next game or two? You play 20, 30 ball rallies. What do you think your confidence and your fear is going to do? Go up or down the, com or the fear? Um, definitely my confidence would go up and I would be less fearful, especially on my forehand, I like to slice it when I'm nervous. So okay. if I come out and hit a lot of topspin ones, it'll let me, help me feel really confident that I can hit more topspin ones later on in the match. All right, so there you go. Have a plan. When you get off to a slow start, you have to play long points.